the happy sixth birthday to Vin's Night In from me, Danny Toman. <laughs> Vince Lightning started six years ago, and everyone might think, oh, this is really original. But you know what? It's not. Uh, what happened was that Vince Lightning started in the Bedford um, in 2010, and I just went up to Tony and I said, do you mind if I run a bit of the night? And Tony said, yeah, he completely trusted me. So today I am at the Hospital Club, which is a place that you know very well, Vin Goodwin. Never been here, never heard of it. What no. is it? We meet again. We meet again. I'm sober. After the riotous video that we last you recorded. You finished yet. <laughs> Now we are here to celebrate your sixth birthday, not yours personally. No, I know I look six, but I'm not. And uh, yeah, six years of Vince Night In. I can't believe I'm here. When I first started Vince Night In, I remember another music night was celebrating its sixth birthday, and I thought, oh God, if anyone's doing this in six years, blimey. And here I am. Oh, I believe it. Whatever. He's not had is. any drink yet. No, but I have had a Caesar salad. <laughs> and I feel like I've got most of it in my teeth. Okay. <laughs> you haven't. We've, we've panned back a bit, so Are it's all right. I am. I'm Very looking excited. forward to it. I always get excited about Vince Lane because it is quite riotous towards the end, and that's obviously when I play at the I'm end. I'm quite riotous towards the end. I won't tell you what I've seen you like after a Vince Lane. <laughs> you talk about food in your teeth now, it'll be red wine on your lips later. Red wine, yeah. That's your tipple, isn't it? It is, yeah. I start on beer, red wine, and then cocktails sometimes, and that's when I know it's game over. That's when we start sliding, never game. sliding down the walls and uh, sitting out in the street until about five in the morning. It was only a smile, but my heart it went wild. I wasn't expecting that. It was a delicate kiss, but I was a bit pissed. It's typical of me, is that? When I'm up on stage, I just, it's a bit like having loads of people round for dinner. That's You're in a West Country then, it's a bit like. Like, I, it's like having people round for a dinner, we just have a bit of a laugh, and it's a bit like having friends round uh, to listen to some music, have a bit of a laugh, have a drawing competition, win some shit prizes. And that's what it's all about, really. It's an amazing thing that you're still doing it. You're still here to live the to live alive. <laughs> How do they let you get away with it? Vin Goodwin, what Can a Can I star. just say on camera, though, thanks to the hospital club for being so massively supportive of Vin's Night In. They basically let me carte blanche lower the tone of their, um, their club for three whole years. Um, and then three years before that, I was at the Bedford in St. James, and I thank them for allowing me to do this shit. We're, we're having a ball. Keep it going! Hello, Phil. You're right. I'm good. How are you? I'm grand, thank you. Very excited. I love the fact that you were sitting there patiently waiting for us to start this interview. I just want to see Vin. You know, uh, it's all about Vin. H he is the man. Well, that is a good introduction, a good way to start the interview. How do you guys know each other? Through Jamie Lawson, actually, who's uh, a friend of mine, and um, he introduced me to Vin. I went, I'd love to play that night. Uh, can you please? And he introduced us, which was very kind, and then I started playing, and um, don't know what happened to him. You said we could be friends with benefits. It's going to be for you. <laughs> I thought that meant sex, but you thought it meant a series of regular cash payments. Uh, what's the best thing about Vin's like you? Actually, I don't want to get sort of gushy, but it, um, it does mean quite a lot to me because um, I moved back from Manchester to London and I sort of found it difficult to kind of get gigs again. And then when I met Vin, he just sort of happily put me on and was being really supportive and gone, yeah, you can come down. And I've played loads of them and it's a great crowd and he's helped me out a lot um, and become a good friend. He's great. It's, it, means, it does mean a hell of a lot. This song proves that homophobia is wrong. They say God didn't make Adam and Steve, it was Adam and Eve. But I know a bloke called Adam and a bloke called Steve, and they both exist. <laughs> You have a bit of a favourite song here. We're in this together. Oh yeah, I'm not sure because uh, uh, it's about George Osborne and he's been sacked now, which is really unfortunate because that song has like lasted me for years. You know, I think George actually um, will be all right. But what about my career, George? You've totally messed it up. I'm, I'm stuck. 
I mean, I could still play it. I might change it to some other politician. Are you able to explain what happens to George in the song? Uh, he gets kidnapped. It's quite dark, isn't it? It's quite dark, but it's silly, because it, obviously that never happened. But um, I did do a video with a George um, sort of lookalike um, that I bundled into my house and into my cellar. And my next door neighbour, I didn't stupidly, didn't tell her what was going on. And she kind of came out of her house and like knocked on and was like, yeah, ash and white, thinking that something really dark was actually happening uh, next door. Sorry, Trish. And this is my real grand. Her name is Winnie Berry. And she would have been about 104 by now, but she's not with us anymore. Please give her a massive round of applause. I think this will be my fourth Vins night in tonight. And, uh, you know, four is my lucky number. Um, probably shouldn't have said that on camera, but hopefully it <laughs> remains my lucky number. Doom now. <laughs> uh, please don't say that. <laughs> Um, but the talent and the level of quality has always been really high. Uh, you know, everyone always looks really nice, plays really nice. I know it's a lovely stage, lovely equipment, all the audience are beautiful. You know, so... Um, you got to say that now. The stage is quite low. You've got to say the audience are beautiful. You should write up close. Of, of course. Well, yeah. You're you up close and you can see them. Yeah. Let's get married. Lorna Blackwood, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. You are performing here. I've seen you here a few times. You're great on stage. <laughs> thank you very much. You, you come across as somebody who really enjoys what they're doing. I do. I love it. Yeah, always have, always will, I think. Please give a huge round of applause for the very talented Lorna Blackwood. <laughs> I'm really excited about playing tonight. I'm always excited for Vin's Night In because Vin has played such a huge part in getting me songwriting. I've always sung all my life. And it was him who said to me, write some of your own songs. Get up there, do it. Vin does so much for all of us as artists. Like he'll shout your name from the rooftops to help you. Um, he's really loyal, isn't he? He's incredibly loyal. He's a great friend. Um, and I've been vocal coaching him myself for years. So he's one of mine. <laughs> I'm one of his. So it's always a joy to come and do it. That was something I was going to ask you about because you have been vocal coaching for Dua Lipa who I'm seeing on Tuesday next week because I'm interviewing her and I met her about a year ago and she's lovely. Um, she's just huge at the moment and years and years you've been vocal coaching for too. Yes, um, Dua's a lovely girl. Uh, really smart, really talented, hard worker, so beautiful. And I can say the same for Ollie from years and years, just a really lovely young man who's just passionate about what he does. Um, and they work really hard for me, which is great. Cam Blackwood, your husband, yeah. I've got to say, is producer of George Ezra's huge album. Um, that must be uh, something that you learn from as well. You learn from your husband with what you're doing as a, you know as a career yeah I've learned a hell of a lot from Cam and our artists cross over now a lot so people that started work with Cam like George now come to me for coaching and vice versa people that have walked through the door for coaching with me have ended up working with Cam I've learned so much from him um, and he's playing with me tonight which is really nice yeah um, so I tend to sit aside when he's producing but every now and again he'll draft me in to get some vocals done and things like that I also do backing vocals for him, um, which is handy. We're a bit of a team, I guess. Yeah, but, and he yeah. probably learns a lot from you as well. I don't know. I'd have to ask him that. He's over there. <laughs> yeah, 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 nodding. <laughs> Chris here. I feel like I'm in, a, in between a tall person sandwich. <laughs> You're not just in one band or one act. You are there all the time pretty much. Yeah, um, sort of I'm a very average player and uh, most people sort of seem to say, are you free this weekend? And I am because I don't have much of a life. So I just sort of tend to play. But uh, yeah, Chris and I have sort of played with most people actually. We've played with pretty much like everyone it. going at Vin's Night In. Well, all the old school. Yeah, Jay, Scott. Jay, Scott, Scott. the Fine, Lawrence, Fox. Adam Vin, Brown, Adam Brown, Harry Harbour, Cat Deal. Yeah. 
like Kippy. Yeah. Like Kippy, we, the we've never met like Kippy before. You, you seem to know everybody. There you go. That's like Kippy. Yeah. We're, we're soon to come to like Kippy. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it's just amazing that the night's grown and grown and grown and uh, Vin should be on Channel 4. Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> Most shocking thing about Vin's 19 is probably how unprepared some of the artists are when you find out, you know, <laughs> me included. I turned up tonight without any chords and I've forgotten everything. So Vin's like last minute sending me chord sheets. But we blag so much and we just think, when are we going to be discovered that we're complete average yeah. blaggers? I think that's the best way to be because yeah. it's because it's natural, isn't it? Otherwise, you'd be worried about it. You'd be throwing up at the side of the stage. <laughs> you don't want that. Vince. Absolutely. Yeah. There's been a couple of times, you know, because I never do up my cymbals or my drums properly, and and I've been playing along, and they just literally fall off stage. Uh, so that's pretty nightmarish. <laughs> that or or the sexual favours you have to give in to get to get a slot. It's know? all coming out now. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, that didn't happen. <laughs> Is Adam Brown. Hello, how, are you doing? how are you? I'm good. Good. Yeah, good. You're just about to go on, so I, I feel bad that you're here doing the interview because you're literally minutes away from. Always got time for you, Phil. Always so, got time. so cool, so calm. <laughs> I love it. It's the pure I, talent coming through. No, this is sheer panic. Um, it's just behind the eyes, it's just sheer panic. But yeah. I love it. It's looking good though. It's, it's working. Um, so tell us about what you do because I've seen you here a few times, but a lot of people watching might not know. No, well, I started off um, in sort of the Cashmere Club and the Bedford scene uh, and through Tony Moore, those kind of guys. Um, and then Vin, I actually knew socially. Um, and Vin basically just has kept on sort of pushing me and also co-writing with me as well so most of well a lot of my songs are co-written with Vin. Is there a highlight in that six years? One night what? that stands out? To be honest, no, loads of them because you know if, if you literally go over to like Vin's house for a Sunday dinner or something he has that uh, that pie feel, he is so good with people, he re really knows how to make things um, make things happen. But, you know, having played with him, you know, we've played so many times. We've played at um, a festival, we've played um, here at Vince Night Inn several times, uh, as well as, you know, lots of other small venues. So. I thought you were just passing with me. I didn't really write that song, but I just thought I'd share that with you. The most shocking or surprising thing about Vince Lane, hopefully you go for the former. I, I want shocking, I want, you know, pure kind of venom. That, that more people haven't heard of it? <laughs> yes, like it. <laughs> Good answer, right answer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, to be fair, that is actually a fair answer. Because I've been playing, I, I performed a lot with Vin, and I've known him for a long time. He's one of my you know, favourite guys who works in music in London just because he does. He does bring people together and it's not just about sort of a promoter who just wants to fill a night for a club because they've managed to land themselves a spot. He does it purely because he enjoys it. Can we go for shock? The most no! Sh <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No! Nothing. Uh, no. The Man of Steel. Was, this man doesn't get shocked. No, the reaction might be different after your performance though. No. What? <laughs> Might be a bit more frazzled then. <laughs> we got our first, oh, yes. we did our first this, super yeah. fans we fr did. from our uh, first yeah. show here. It's that, shocking that was shocking that because I don't know how we got yeah. fans, but we were able to do that here. Super fans as in stalkers or weird yeah. obsessed fans that send yeah. you weird presents? We, we love them. They, they came to every single one of our shows last time we were on tour here. and. Um, that, I mean, I can't believe that they liked us that much. That was very heartwarming. Oh, that's very humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was, that's that was good very shocking. Was very Feet on the ground, guys. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens after this show. Vin? Well, I've known Vin uh, probably a little bit over six years now, uh, since he came to the Bedford and did a very special Judy Zook night. Yeah. And he asked me to host it. I said, no, it's your night, you should host it. And that was his first hosting experience. And afterwards I said, you're really good at this. And uh, I said, you should come and cover some nights when I'm not hosting. 
He's a natural, isn't he? He is. He, he's charming, he's funny, he's got a gracious heart, and he's a really warm human being. And uh, I'm proud to call him a friend, but I'm really proud to see what he's done. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be together for a load of my good friend. Yeah. We've got a massive uh, CV. We have to talk about Iron Maiden because you were one of the guys that started it back in the late 70s. Start it, but I was in one of the original lineups in 1977. I was a child prodigy, yeah. obviously. If you listen to the music, especially the early albums, there wasn't a lot of space for keyboards, and it really, uh, the experiment when I joined the band was to see if it was dual lead synth and guitar. And we tried that for a while and it didn't feel right for me. And after I left, they didn't really look for another keyboard player. They got another guitarist, which was the right formula. So, But I was, you know, I look back and that was the my introduction to the music business. Yeah. That's the reason I moved to London. I'm very proud of those days. And I guess they say that things happen for a reason. So if that hadn't happened, who knows what would have happened. I might be a multi-millionaire now living in Hawaii. <laughs> I got to play keyboards with a band through 86, 87, 88, um, and we had a big hit. The song was number one in, I believe, 15 different countries, including the USA. And I've heard how well you can all sing. Girls, guys, there is no excuses. I've got one of the most expensive, the million dollar quartets of singers here on stage who are gonna do the harmonies in the chorus. Uh, cutting Crew, can't forget Cutting Crew. Mid 80s, 86, I think it was, wasn't it? 86, 87, yeah, yeah. and a bit of 88. That was an amazing period. So that was a band that I played keyboards with and stuck around long enough to enjoy touring with a number one hit in America and throughout Europe. And th these were great. The 80s were fantastic. I mean, that that was a great period to be in a band and have success. And and uh, and I'm you know I'm, tonight, uh, as is tradition, I may well do a little acoustic rendition in my performance later on. Vin's night in is that he he quite almost successfully transfers his grandmother's 70s front room into wherever he is and and I think what he's done here at the hospital club is consistently bring an energy and and great curation of artists right so he has an instinct for what's going to be a really good night I'm very honored that he's invited me to come and play tonight thank you Vin um, but I think every time I come here I always see and hear something that I've never seen and heard before and, and he does it with good grace and he gets everyone involved, the drawing, yeah. pictures and stuff. I, I, I won one, my drawing of, I think Dave Hanson won, um, won one week that I was here, so I was, that's my highlight, winning the drawing contest. That's great. I always think that Vin's Nan, obviously with the wonky picture on the stage, I always think that she's looking on and every, everybody, not, not shocked at some of the antics that happens, but I always think that she's quite impressed, quietly impressed. I'm sure she is, overlooking everything and and gently enjoying everything that happens. Absolutely. Thank you. Are they the best singers? Everyone here is amazing, actually. Thank you, gents. The wonderful Tony Moore.